Holy shit, shit, shit. Let me tell you, I barely watched the 80s cartoon of Gem and the Holograms, but even I felt insulted by the movie. It vaguely resembles anything out of the cartoon. Gem 2015 is the cliche, rags to riches, we're now a famous band, the recording company is evil, and oh no, you're going solo? What about us? This was about the music. And they break up. Though here they abruptly break up, cry for five minutes, and they just come back like, whatever, we're cool now, no explanation. This movie is two hours long. Jimmy Neutron did the same story in 15 minutes. I you want to do everything you solo. want. Go watch Straight Outta Compton, Selena, Josie and the Pussycats. Josie and the Pussycats had the same story, but it took itself less seriously. The gem cartoon itself, from what I understand, is a soap opera about Jerrica, the owner of Starlight Enterprise, who moonlights in a band under the name Gem and the Holograms, using a hologram to change forms. Like Hannah Montana, she's got a double life. She's also got a rival band killing her buzz, the misfits who aren't in this film. Nobody wants to hear this boring stuff, old man. Yeah, take a hike, Jack. Because the director is known for G.I. Joe Retaliation and two Justin Bieber documentaries, they repeat the Bieber origin of getting famous on YouTube instantly over one video. Aren't there any movies about characters trying, failing, and trying again to get famous? The first of Pixar's 22 rules of storytelling is you admire a character for trying more than for their successes. If you want to connect with your audience, that'd be more relatable. The biggest record company in the world wants to sign us. You're gonna be famous! Now, let me open with a quote from the star of the film, Aubrey Pipples. There's a lot of pressure because we changed so much of it, but in my personal opinion is that if we tried to replicate it, we would get just as much, if not more hate, because we would never do it justice. There would always be something a little bit off. Okay, first off, she's being recorded, so of course she'd have to say something stupid off the top of her head to defend it. When the studio monitors every one of her public interviews. You're under contract. The concert's going as planned. The story of my life. But should someone agree to that, go ask a Final Fantasy fan what they prefer more. Spirits Within or Advent Children. Second, she'd make a good Asuka from Evangelion. And Asuka is American, so it's not whitewashing. That's an improvement! At least her and the rest of the cast could sing, but no one sung the gem theme. One of their hit songs is called Young Blood. I thought it was already an existing, like, Katy Perry, Taylor Swift song or something. It sounds so typical current pop songish. Ladies and gentlemen, the internet sensation, Gem! An authentic gem movie could never work unless it was the 80s with all these surreal visuals and neon colors. There's a bit of that in this film, but not much. Now you've seen the rising fame type of movie where you have a montage of fans gushing and news reports or talk shows discussing the star. Chris Pratt cameos saying he dated Jem once as a joke, but it's footage of an old USA Today Lego movie interview where he talks about playing with Jem dolls and dating them as a kid. The Jimmy Fallon and Elisa Keys cameo discussing Jem was old footage of them talking about the Jem cartoon itself. Jem is truly outrageous. Truly, truly, truly outrageous. Oh, oh, Jem! The footage was noticeably low quality, as if they ripped it straight off YouTube. When Jimmy's talk show broadcast at HD. I guess they were too lazy to request HD master footage from NBC. The worst was Dwayne The Rock Johnson praising Jem's song, Youngblood, through grainy, low-quality Instagram footage. He says, That's some bad blood! They should have called it badass blood! That's old footage of him talking about Taylor Swift's bad blood. They use pre-existing footage unrelated to Jem as a cameo. It'd be like if we made a new Curious George film and within the film there would be a quote cameo by Kanye West. George doesn't care about black people. They couldn't hire celebrities to cameo, instead they got the rights to use archival footage, which is much less expensive. That is so desperate. Gem gets worse. When the film was announced, the director told fans, hey, upload a vid of yourself, hashtag Gem the movie, talking about how much you love Gem, and maybe we'll cast you in the movie as a star. Casting. We are looking for the most talented girls and boys in the world 
to be in our movie, Triple Threats, singing, dancing, acting. We want you to be our movie star. A star would imply they had a main role and not a cameo. They repeatedly cut in footage of these fans to show Jem's rise in YouTube stardom. But there's a problem. This is the 80s logo. This is the logo they use in the movie. You repeatedly see fans geeking out about Jem with the 80s logo and merchandise and even the cartoon itself on a TV in the background. One of the fans was dressed as a misfit. It contextually makes no sense in this universe. But it's nice they had fan involvement and have them mentioning Jem got me through this and this and such. Too bad it wasn't for a better film. The movie overuses social media. Very often, they don't even have their own background music. Instead, while the story is going on in clear HD footage, they cut back and forth, back and forth to unrelated, low-quality YouTube videos of random young aspiring musicians performing through their dinky little 240p resolution webcams, absolutely unrelated to Jim. Did Oliver Stone direct this film? And for transitioning from place to place, you get footage of Google Earth zooming in and out a map. The Google Maps logo is in the corner and a copyright Google Corporation in the bottom. I'm not fucking joking. This is pathetic. I'm impressed this movie didn't open up with a Windows Movie Maker title that reads Gem. The movie by Epic Waffle Productions. Please like and subscribe, XD. Pathetic. Pathetic. Fucking shameless. Ready, everyone? Finger of shame. 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 will be right back after these messages. We now return to the Transformers. Pathetic. Fucking shameless. Transformers, Battleship, G.I. Joe, other Hasbro-based movies have $100 million in their budget. This film's budget was only $5 million. That's nothing for Hollywood. Paranormal Activity 3 and 4 were made on that budget. One of my favorite musicals, Repo, the Genetic Opera, which I'll discuss in an upcoming video, was made with Eight million dollars, and that looks fucking amazing compared to this. One more hit of the glow. Don't get cut for tonight. I said the stage. We set the stage. You assume Jem's ultra famous in the film, thus will be performing at football stadiums. No, they're only shown playing in tiny venues at clubs. In what's supposed to be the big deal super concert, you clearly see there's no more people behind two rows of about 30 people. The, the characters were basic. You get to know Jem, but hardly anyone else. One of her bandmates was an ex-con, which that had the potential for more jokes but they squandered it. I wanted more of that one character. What are you? I am Synergy, a holographic computer designed to be the ultimate audio-visual entertainment synthesizer. Back to the cartoon. Jim's father built Synergy. She was this humanoid in a computer who supplied their instruments, disguises through holograms, and was the band's mentor. Here, Synergy is this little R2-D2 piece of shit that only beeps. And it's spelled five energy or something, least speak. I don't fucking know. It hums this one song and Jim says, Oh, hey, that's the song my dad uses to sing to me when I was a kid. It means a lot to me. Show, don't tell. The movie opens on flashbacks of her as a child. Why didn't they just film a scene of, of her father humming the song to her? You said your dad's inventions didn't work. <laughs> Among the grainy camcorder footage of her as a child taking place in 1999, Jim's playing with Hasbro's My Little Pony toys 
but they're the current 2010 versions you can now buy at Toys R Us near you. Synergy does nothing here but project some camcorder footage and a treasure map. Suddenly this just becomes the Goonies like, oh no Jim, we gotta go find One-Eyed Willie's treasure. What the fuck is going on? I'm underwater, look, I found a treasure. A treasure that's up on a rope. The treasure being pieces of the robot scattered around for some reason in man-made areas that could easily be demolished or moved around. Oh, and you know how they are called Gem and the Holograms if they barely use holograms in this film? Seriously? Some guy says to the other, what do we call them? Uh, Gem and uh, hey, that robot's projecting a little hologram light effect. Let's call them Gem and the Holograms. They didn't give a shit. And the final climax of the film was a heist, breaking into a major corporation at night and steal back the last piece of the robot which were also just Jem's earrings the evil record producer Erica casually took away. Erica, who was Eric in the cartoon, didn't care about the earrings. She took them away because, hey, these aren't very trendy. I'll remove these and give you nicer ones. All they needed to do was ask, hey, can I get my earrings back? Yeah, sure, okay. Erica doesn't know their robot parts. Why would she put them in a locked safe and not in a desk drawer? They put the earrings in the robot and it's just a hologram message by Jem's father saying, Hey kid, believe in yourself. That's the best treasure of all. Get out of my goddamn scuba gear, you imbecile! But at the end, after it's all over, do I recommend this film? Yes, it's so bad, so cheesy, it's hilarious. Hasbro should be ashamed their name is attached to this. There's Disney Channel original films on TV with better production. This is like a gem movie made by Ed Wood. And no spoilers, I'll type it in the description, but there's something after the credits that made us, my three other friends, Two strangers, the only people in the theater, start cheering like, yes, yes, part two, make it happen, yes, that's the only reason I want a part two, it's gonna be great. <laughs> oh, it's so awful. <laughs> Gem's wardrobe and Gem and her friends sold separately. Gem!